morning, everybody. If you're new, hit that subscribe button before you leave. I make new videos every day. We're on episode 3,169, I believe. There's a lot to catch up on. If you want to catch up, go to my main page, my channel, my playlists. They're all there. You can catch up from the beginning or you can start from right here. Leave me a comment down below saying that you're new so that I can welcome you here. I'm here in Wolseley, Saskatchewan in Canada. I'm going to be heading east back home into Manitoba where I live. found a spot to park at this tiny little truck stop last night. I had two minutes left on my clock when I got here. I just about ran out of time. And that wasn't my 13 hour clock. Cause here in Canada, I can drive up to 13 hours in one day if I want to. However, I only have 16 hours to do that in. So I ran out of my 16 hours. So yesterday was a 16 hour work day. How long was your work day? Here's my load that I got. I picked it up in Calgary yesterday, west of here in Alberta. Wall and ceiling boards. And these are going into the GTA area near Toronto. They haven't decided yet if I'm taking it all the way through or if I'm taking it to our yard and someone else is taking it through from there. You know, I offered that I could take it through. Uh, that means I would be delivering Tuesday morning. But we'll see, they'll let me know soon. I have about five and a half hours now to get back to our yard where I'm going to park that trailer and uh, go home for a couple of days to reset my logbook. All right, we're all set and ready to go. We're just going to set this to take me back to the yard. Let's see, I think we've got about 519 kilometers to go and about 300 miles. Proceed to the highlighted route. Aye, aye. Let's go. Good day, we're going home today. Time, sorry, in, at nighttime, it feels like winter's around the corner. But during the daytime, it feels like we're still in the middle of summer. just up the road a little ways probably about an hour or so up the road 
Uh, I'm gonna grab a coffee there at the Tim Hortons. Even though I know I shouldn't be supporting Tim Hortons anymore. Everybody talks about how far they've gone downhill. But I mean, it's just, they're everywhere. Just convenient for today, I guess. But for the most part, I've, I've stopped supporting Tim Hortons as much as I can. But not totally, I guess. I mean, kind of, I'm kind of broken on the subject. I mean, most Canadians will tell you that Tim Hortons has really dropped the ball in the last five years. Like, really dropped the ball. Like, it's hard to place an order. They get the order wrong almost every single time. Depends where you go. In my town where I live in Steinbeck, they're still pretty good. But most places across Canada, especially when you get to Toronto, it's just, it's not what it used to be. Canadians get it. They know what I'm talking about. So, most people have boycotted it and have moved on to Starbucks or other coffee companies, as have I, for the most part. But, you know, I guess not completely yet. All right, Mooseman. Oh, they got a muddy parking lot. Of course they do. All right, gotta go through the mud to get to Tim's for subpar service and subpar coffee. Oh, the things we do that we can't explain why we do them, right? Why do you go there if you don't like them drawn? I don't know. I, I don't have an answer for you. It's because it's convenient, I guess. If there was a Starbucks, I'd probably go to the Starbucks. There's no Starbucks here. I'm sorry, but co-op gas station coffee doesn't cut it either, that's even worse. You know, in the States, I like Dunkin' Donuts, I like Caribou coffee, a whole bunch of stuff. Pilot Flying J coffee, the truck stop coffee in the States is great, TA, Petro. This is just what's available to me today, okay? Look at these guys, a whole bunch of trucks went in there and probably got stuck, yikes. Why would it be so muddy? I mean, I know why it's muddy, because it rained a lot, but I mean, you'd think they'd pack it down a little bit so people don't get stuck. Oh, look at this, we're gonna get front row parking. Look at this, wow. Right in the front. Beautiful, this never happens. Wow, it feels so special and important. Yeah, VIP parking. Straighten out here so I don't look like a dingleberry. Gotta park your truck straight. Oh, guys. Guys, guys, I'm not gonna show this guy because I don't wanna like humiliate or embarrass people on my channel openly, but uh, this guy is walking across front in flip flops. This is your friendly neighborhood trucker Josh coming at you, telling you to put some shoes on. Flip flops are not proper attire at a truck stop. Or in, in a truck. I, I get you want to wear flip-flops in your truck if you want. I don't care what's in your truck. When you get out of your truck, you just put some shoes on. I have flip-flops too. Like, they're very slippery, especially if you go on pavement and somebody maybe spilled some diesel fuel or in this parking lot here, it's very muddy, very slippery. It's not safe. It also looks very unprofessional. That's the thing that bothers me the most. Very unprofessional. You should be wearing a, a clean shirt, jeans, boots, or shoes, like proper shoes. So that we look professional and presentable. I mean, if you're receiving freight, you get two trucks that show up and one guy hops out with shorts and flip flops and another guy hops out properly dressed. Maybe it doesn't bother you. I don't know, it bothers me. If it doesn't bother you, good for you, but I am a strong believer in looking the part. You might say, looks don't matter. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. <laughs> don't lie to me. Looks matter. Presentation matters. Image matters. It's not always the most important thing. Quality, I would say, would be 
more important than image. But the way you present yourself to people, first impressions, very important. You know, I don't have a clean truck right now because I went down that gravel road. I got to wash my truck. But it's on my mind. I have to wash my truck. I'm not just going to leave it dirty like this. I'm not going to put on a dirty shirt that I had on yesterday. I'm not going to put on dirty pants. I'm going to put deodorant on in the morning. I'm going to make sure that I look presentable, dress properly when I leave my truck and enter the public space. You say, well, why do you always got to have, what's wrong with having dirty clothes? It just shows you're a hard worker. Well, yeah, sometimes. Like sometimes I, I just finished tarping a load. I'm all dirty. I run in to get a coffee, whatever. Uh, I try to change my clothes first, but my analogy for this always is like, why do you always want everything clean? Why do you always want to be presentable? Well, when you go to the bathroom and you take a poop, do you wipe every time or you just leave it dirty? You know, when it gets dirty, you clean it, right? Before you go out in public? At least I'm hoping that's the case for everybody watching this. So when you get dirty, you clean yourself up before you go back into the public space. Look good, smell good. And above all, do your best. Make sure you're delivering quality product and quality service along with the quality image and presentation. That's the kind of people I would want to hire to drive my trucks. The most inauthentic part of Tim's is right here on their cup. <laughs> oh, but I did it again. I did it again. Don't judge me. I need to call. Okay, only I can judge people. <laughs> ah, well, we keep doing it. I keep doing it. Okay. They did get my order wrong, by the way, and I it was just a coffee. Two cream, then a shot of espresso in it. Why do they always put sugar in it? I, I hate sugar and coffee. It ruins it for me. Two cream and a shot of espresso, that's it. Double double? No. Not double double. Okay, okay. Brings me a double double. Every time. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. Let's go home. Winnipeg that's 
There's so many vehicles on the highway right now that backup is gonna be like an hour long. Oops, so. I don't wanna get stuck in that. Looks like all these people had the same idea. They're coming the other way though. The construction leading out of Winnipeg isn't as bad as the construction going in. It goes down to one lane, but all of the four-wheelers have discovered this little uh, detour that they can take down a gravel road and they all take it. And then they cut back into the lane in front of all the traffic. So us trucks that have to stay on the highway hardly move at all because all the cars are going and cutting the line. I'm just gonna take this down to the two and avoid all of that kerfuffle altogether. Just like that, we're parked for my weekend. Well, Friday and Saturday, my weekend. We'll be leaving here early Sunday, as early as I can. So you have a good rest, Blue, all right? No big parties, okay? You can have a couple of friends over. You watch over your little brother over there. I don't wanna get a call from the cops, all right? Kids. All right, so time for me to go home.